In this video, we're going to start talking about how to deal with missing data. So specifically in this video, we'll talk about three relatively easy ways to deal with missing data. And in the next video, we'll talk about a more complicated way, which sometimes works a lot better. But it's important to understand these three fundamentals first. So before we get into the methods themselves, let's look at the very small data set we're going to be using. If you watch the missing data mechanisms video, then you know about this kind of example we've been using. But if not, then just quickly to explain it, this is a data set where we gave a poll to all the people in town and we asked them first for whether they're male or female, which is either F or M in this first column. And the second thing we asked them is how many overdue library books do you have? Because we're doing some kind of study on overdue library books. So as we can see, there is of course missing data in our table. Some people have answered this uh, female answered one, this male answered two, but there's still uh, two values here which are missing. So through these three methods, we're going to be filling in different things for all these missing values, and we'll see the pros and cons of each. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first method is by far the easiest and the one that people come up with most often, and it's called row deletion. In this method, we literally just omit any row in the data set that has a missing value. We pretend it does not exist. It's really easy to think about. So here, the first thing we do, as we'll do in all of them, is fill in the values we do have, because we don't want to be throwing away real data. So these we all have. And in these cases, so one correlates to the one row deletion method, we're basically going to just get rid of those rows. Seems simple enough, right? We don't have the data, so why even bother including them? So that's the pro of it. The pro is going to be that it is very simple very easy to do computationally and just to think about. Of course, it seems too good to be true because it usually is. The con is that we're usually only safe in doing this when the data is missing completely at random. And if you're new to that term, please check out my video on missing data mechanisms where I explain what that means. But if the data is missing completely at random, then each missing value is missing at some certain rate and has nothing to do whether uh, the person is male or female. So. By getting rid of it, we're basically just reducing the size of our data set, but not introducing any bias. Now, that's a very interesting word, bias, because if the data is not missing completely at random, well, so that is that if the missingness of this uh, data, the rate at which it's missing, depends on the sex of the respondent, so maybe females have a different missing data rate than males, then by removing all of the places where we have missing data, we might be kind of accidentally removing a lot more females uh, data than males data if females have a higher missing data rate, which can introduce bias in our data. So the con is that it's probably, in most cases, going to introduce bias in our data set. And kind of an easy way to think about bias is just that the new data set we have, which is just this 1, 1, 3, 2, and 2, is no longer representative of the real data that we want to collect from our neighborhood. So that's one of the biggest bias, and that's why you have to be really careful when you're using row deletion. Make sure it's really, really what you want to do. You're probably not going to want to do this one. The next one is a little more clever, and maybe you've also heard of it. So it's called mean or median imputation. Imputation sounds like a big word, but it's basically just saying that for each missing value, I'm going to fill it in with the mean or median of all the values that I do have. It seems like a really kind of intuitive thing to do because of all the data that I do have, it seems like if I just kind of take the average, the kind of common value of it and fill it in for all these missing ones, I should be in the clear, right? So the pros again here is that it's pretty simple to think about and to execute computationally. But what about the cons? To think about the cons, let's go ahead and fill in these datas here. So uh, on this one, we have one, one, three, two, and two, which are the not missing values, the ones we have. And now what we're going to do is take the mean. So if we add these up, we get 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 divided by the 5 values I have is 1.8. So that, let me do a different color, that 1.8 is going to be the values I fill in here. Now, notice that in this case I just had two values to fill in, but let's say I had 10 values to fill in. I'd have a 10, uh, I'd have 10 1.8s in my data, basically. So the con there is that it's going to artificially kind of reduce the variability of your data. When you have a lot of missing data to fill in, and you fill in all of those missing data with the exact same value, your basically standard deviation or variance of your data set is going to go down. It's kind of it's going to seem like many of your data points have the exact same value, whether that value is the mean or the median of your existing values. So the con here 
is that it's going to lower your variability. And that's not necessarily something you want. Now let's talk about a the most clever case so far, which is called a hot deck method. And a hot deck method, it's not a very, it's not a set method like either of these two, like this one or two. But a hot deck is just any family of methods where we compute a missing value. So we fill in a missing value based on the value of examples that are similar um, to that value. And again, to kind of explain myself, let's go through this example. I'm going to start off as I always do, filling in my not missing values. And in this very basic hot deck example, what I'm going to do is if the missing value belongs to a female, then I'm going to put in the average only of the females that I do have data for. So for this female who has a missing value, I'm going to take the average over the other females who happen to be this one, this three, and this two, whose average is two. So again, let me use different color. So for that reason, I'm filling in this female's missing value as two because it's the average of the overdue books for all the females that I do have data for. And again, for this male, I do the same thing. So the other males have a one, this one has a two. So I take 1.5 as my missing value here. Now, one thing you might be asking is why is this better than the mean or median imputation we did above? The reason it's better is because we're incorporating more data um, that we do have uh, basically data for, more values that we do have data for. So we're incorporating the information about whether someone is male or female. And to really think about the power of this method, imagine that we had even more columns. We had, for example, someone's family income. We maybe had their geographic uh, region within the city. So if we take geographic region, family income, and the sex of the um, respondent into account, and we figure out a couple of people who are similar to this missing value, and then take the average of them to fill it in, it makes sense, right? Because we would kind of maybe expect that your number of overdue books might be similar to those who have the same sex, family income, and maybe geographic region. Maybe that's not true, but it's a very, very educated guess. So to fill in the pros of the hot deck method, it is more educated because it takes into account a lot more information, so more educated. The cons are that it is possible that it's more computationally expensive. So whereas just deleting data is pretty easy, filling in a mean or a median is pretty easy. For this one, we have to actually look through all the data, do some computation so it can be um, expensive. And expensive here, I mean like computationally for your computer to go through this whole process when you have tons of missing data. So that's it. That's a very quick survey on three very easy missing data mechanisms you can use, as well as their pros and their cons, um, as explained through this toy data set we've been using. In the next video, we'll be talking about a more complicated model called multiple imputation. And that will take a little bit more time to explain, but you'll see that it is, uh, uh, it is usually more powerful than these three methods here. So until next time.